Equifax, one of the largest credit reporting agencies, has been sued. And yes, they do owe you some money. Equifax had one of the largest data breaches in American history, and they were in fact sued by the FTC. Well, that lawsuit was settled and closed, and a lot of people thought that they missed the window to submit any claims. Well, in fact, there has been an extension that has been alive and acting and working, and a lot of people are not talking about this. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole process to see if you were affected and how to file a claim and how to actually attack any negative items with Equifax using this settlement. So you do not wanna miss one minute of this video. There's gonna be a lot of super juicy sauce in this. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike the Credit Guy. I'm the owner and founder of Limitless Culture. We created the most advanced DIY credit management system in the industry. Our system allows you to take control of your credit, creating custom Metro 2 attack letters every single round, never using templates for only $55.99 a month. Link is always going to be in the description. Now let's get into this video. This is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, and I am not an attorney. This is for educational purposes only. So the initial deadline to file a claim in the Equifax settlement was January 22nd of 2020. So that's why people think it's not possible anymore. But you can still file a claim, this is directly from their website, for expenses you incur between January of 2020 all the way to January 22nd of 2024 as a result of the identity theft or fraud related to the breach, such as losses from unauthorized charges to your accounts, fees you pay to professionals like accountants or attorneys to help you recover from identity theft, other expenses you incurred while recovering from identity theft like notary fees, document shipping fees, postage, mileage, and phone charges. These are all things that you can add into this claim, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, there's more. You can also file a claim for the time you spent recovering from identity theft or fraud between January 2020 and January 2024. You can be compensated up to $25 per hour, up to 20 hours. There are limited funds available, so your claim may be reduced. But listen, there's not a lot of people out there that know that this even is possible and, is, and it actually exists because nobody's talking about it. Now, using the link that I put in the comment section, that is for the settlement page. Now, when you go to that settlement page, you're gonna scroll all the way to the very bottom, scroll past, file a claim, until you get to the green button, just like this, that, say, that says clearly, find out if your information was impacted. You're going to click on that button, and now it's gonna generate the new screen to enter your information. Now you should see a screen that says check your eligibility. You're going to enter your last name and the last set six digits of your social security number, if I could say that right. Once you do that, you hit submit, then it's gonna tell you if you were affected. Now the crazy thing here is, now you have proof that your data was in fact breached and you were involved in this massive data breach with Equifax. This is the smoking gun. This is what you need. Save it for the rest of your life just in case you ever need it because this is super valuable. Now that you know that you were in fact affected, now you can follow through and file a claim. Now I'm gonna walk you through on all the things it's gonna ask you and what you need to do in the process. Now, if you were working on your credit from 2020 to 2024, it's important if you were disputing names and addresses that did not match your actual driver's license that you have on file, then guess what? Those names and addresses may not be you. They may have been put on there because you were affected by the data breach. All of those dispute letters that you sent are super valuable. Once you click on file a claim, it's gonna populate a screen to have you enter all of your personal information. Make sure you enter it all properly because they are going to communicate with you. Now the next screen, after you submit all your personal information, it's gonna say section one, cash payment, time spent. Now if you claim 10 hours or less, you must describe the actions you took in response to the data breach. If you claim more than 10 hours total, you must describe the actions you took in response to the data breach and include supporting documents. Now, you click on the little button that says, yes, I spent time. 
it's gonna give you the option to actually submit those documents later. Now, once you click on the little time spent button, you want to enter this response. Time spent calling Equifax, typing and creating dispute letters, looking at credit reports, time was spent going back and forth to the post office, time was spent finding errors on my credit report, time was spent calling Equifax multiple times, time was spent filling out envelopes, time was spent printing and signing dispute letters, time was spent filling out USPS certified mail forms and put that in the little box. Next, it's going to ask you what was the approximate month? I was affected in January, so I chose January, approximate year 2020, and I chose the maximum amount of hours at 20 hours. Now you're gonna scroll down and click the button that says supporting documents. You said it says check this box if you want to upload the documents later so you can submit your claim without putting the documents in there. Now there's going to be different boxes depending on how you were affected and how you want to file your claim. There's gonna be one for lost types of expenses and losses due to identity theft, fraud, or misuse of your personal information. You want to put the actual amount that you were affected by and you have to calculate that properly. Now some of the expenses are gonna be notary, fax, postage, copying, mileage, and long distance telephone charges related to the data breach. Last part is the most important. Did you know that the Equifax physical location has a like button as soon as you walk in? No, it really doesn't. But this channel definitely has a like button. Make sure that you smash that like button and you hit the subscribe button because we're trying to get this channel to 1 million subscribers and we cannot do it without you. Now I created an actual expense list that you can use if you want to because I was truly affected by this and I wanted to show them exactly how I was affected and what I had to pay for while I was trying to dispute these names and addresses that were not mine that were on my credit reports. Now I spent 200 bucks for mailing for a full 12 months. I actually spent a thousand dollars because I didn't have a cell phone. I had to buy a cell phone so I can watch these alerts to keep track of this actual data breach, make sure no one stole my information. I spent $1,500 for cell phone service. I broke that down to like 100 or 125 bucks. A, it was like 125 bucks a month for 12 months. $1,200 for home internet service for 150 bucks a month, something like that, I can't remember. And then I had to buy a printer. That printer cost me 150 bucks for a total of $3,900. That's the total that I put in my claim section. Now, once you fill out all that information, it's gonna take you to the next screen. You hit the next button, and then it's gonna ask you, how would you like your cash payment? Do you want it in a check, prepaid card, or PayPal? I said I want it in a check. So I hit the next button, and then it's gonna give you a breakdown of all the information that you entered to make sure everything's accurate, and you hit submit. You wanna save the actual claim number that it's gonna give you, screenshot it, print it out, make sure you save it for your records. Now let's get to the juicy part. Now, if you were affected because it told you that you were affected and you actually have collections, charge offs, whatever it may be on your credit report, this is your chance to attack the credit reporting agency Equifax and then also the other two after you're done hitting up Equifax first. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to go to the CFPB website. Now you should have actually screenshotted the section that I told you where it said, yes, you were affected with a data breach. We're going to file a complaint with the CFPB. Very simple. You're going to type up a very simple letter using Word doc or actual Google docs for free. And you're going to attach this letter to your complaint and you're going to put this verbiage in the complaint section. You're going to state, my information was sold and bought illegally because I was a victim of the Equifax data breach. I want these items deleted from my credit reports effective immediately. I'm attaching proof that Equifax has admitted that I was in fact a victim of this data breach and Equifax has done nothing. Please help me delete these illegal accounts from my credit reports, list all those negative accounts and all, that are on your Equifax credit reports, account names and account numbers, and file your complaint with the CFPB. Then you want to attach the printed part that Equifax is showing you were affected attached to that complaint. And you want to attach your typed up letter also. 
after you have submitted your complaint with the CFPB, they usually will get back to you within seven to 14 days, especially with a situation like this involving the Equifax data breach. Now, once you get the response, now we're hoping that they sent a response saying all of these accounts were deleted. You need to print that out. You need to save that information, save it on a document. Once you print it out, you're going to send all of that information and all the Equifax printed out stuff and you're going to send it to the credit reporting agencies that are also reporting those negative accounts on your credit reports. And you're gonna state the same exact thing that you stated in that PDF letter that you created. And you're going to tell them, I was a victim of the Equifax data breach. I want these items deleted from my credit report. As you can see, the CFPB actually deleted them because I was a victim of this data breach. Send it certified mail to TransUnion, and Experian, and then you're gonna wait your 30 days. If they don't delete it, now you file a complaint individually, one for Experian and one for TransUnion, and you let the CFPB know, as you are aware, on case so-and-so, you seen that I was a victim of the data breach with Equifax. I let Experian know that I was a victim of this situation, and they did nothing. Please follow up and make Experian delete these from my credit report, or TransUnion, which either ones are reporting those accounts that were included on your Equifax credit report. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you attack them using the Equifax data breach. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This was a crazy video. I showed you exactly how to see if you were a victim of the Equifax data breach, how to file an actual claim, and how to actually attack Equifax because you got negative items that are still hurting you and you were a victim of this data breach all in the same video under 14 minutes. That's crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything else specific you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section, drop some emojis in there so we can get this video going so more people can learn about this time frame that they have. They still have time to join this claim. Now, I cannot thank you enough for watching. So thank you, our community. We cannot do it without you. So thank you for watching. Make sure that you watch the next two videos because those are recommended by YouTube. And don't forget, subscribe to increase your credit score.